Right, this is part three of my trilogy or quadrilogy, I haven't yet worked that out, uh, videos on building this computer. Um, I'm trying to keep this last video quick because my mobile phone battery is getting kind of low and I'm not really right next to a power socket, so I can't be bothered to move from this spot because I'm relatively comfortable here and everything's already here. Um, so anyway, the first video, I talked about the case, um, put fit the power supply, um, CD drive, CD, well, CD, DVD drive, Blu-ray drive, and the hard drive, and sorting out fans and such. One thing I will point out is that fans are really easy to um, fit, so I haven't actually said how to do it. Because if you can't do it, then you shouldn't even be attempting to build a computer yourself. Um, the second video consisted of me building, about putting the processor, the processor cooler, and the RAM onto the motherboard. Um, as when you build this whole unit together, it makes it a lot easier than putting the motherboard in and then trying to put everything in. Believe me, that was the first time I built a computer. I tried it that way. It was hard, and I cut myself on the cheap case so many times. So for now, I'm going to show you how to put the motherboard in the case, um, fit the graphics card as well, which in this case is an ATI Radeon HD 6850, um, um, sold by PowerColor. Um, and then hopefully, given time, I will also talk about some of the power connections and so on. Um, important thing to note here quickly, I'm going to do now, which I forgot to do in the last video. This socket here is where the, the fan for the processor cooler is plugged in. It's got a, a little mark there, which you won't be able to see, and it just says CPU fan. That should be self-explanatory. If it doesn't say that on any of the bits, then you need to look in your instruction manual to find it for the motherboard. Um, and that'll obviously power your fan, and so on. Now, another thing to note is in this case, you can see this big black block here, and that's got eight sockets in it. Um, that is the processor power, and that will either come as an eight pin or a four pin connection. You need to make sure that whatever motherboard you go for, it supports the processor you're using, and that it also has either four or eight pin. And then when you get your power supply, you then need to make sure that that has either the 8 or the 4 pin connector for the processor. Um, the other connection on the motherboard, which the only reason I'm showing you these now is because it's difficult to get in the case afterwards. Um, the other connections is this nice long one here. It's a 24 pin connection and that basically powers everything else in the computer. Um, some more powerful graphics cards are different as I will try and show you here. It has its own additional power input which you need. Again, I will show you that later. So normally with the power supplies you can get a 20 pin with a little nodule with a 4 pin bit which just slots in which works fine with that. In my one it's just a dedicated 24 pin connection. Um, so anyway, without further ado I will hand my phone back over to my good friend and I will show you what to do. Now to make it easier to avoid you catching your finger in any bits or anything like that, what I'm going to do is I will show you a nice trick which is perfectly stable and shouldn't give you anything to worry about. You can pick it up by the processor cooler. It's strong. It's strong enough to hold it properly. So what you want to do is very, very carefully put it in. Now I will say that I've already put this motherboard in this case and I've already checked to see if there's any issues or annoyances and there are. So, hence why I've put it in as an, at an angle, and there we go. Right, so I've put it in at an angle to make sure it can actually fit in properly. It's all in properly. Now, again, if I take my phone, one thing you want to look at with the screws that came with your case is specifically the motherboard screws. Now. Again, you can't see it very well because the light's overpowering and the phone gets blurry. But you will see the screw holes also have some metal bits around them. That's essentially what grounds your motherboard and the case. So if anything goes wrong, well, it goes grounded and then shouldn't fry your computer. And it makes it run for longer. Again, this is a first-hand experience by me. I'm speaking from experience because I fried a motherboard by not making sure they were connected. So please, please, please make sure you do. Um, now, another thing to note, which I will show you, again, I don't know how well it will be shown, 
the screw I've just placed, placed on my power supply is smooth. On the actual bit that would touch the motherboard, it's smooth. You will get some rough ones which are designed for the outside of your case. Do not use those on the motherboard. The smooth ones are the ones you want to use because they will not damage your motherboard. Right. The other thing is underneath, in this case, um, there are some small orange gold um, connectors which plug into the case, which you just want to line up with where the uh, screws will go in. So that then you obviously have all the screw points needed. Some cases just have bits that are already raised to do that. Uh, I'm going to pause the video now just while I put the screws in and then I will resume to then talk some more about other bits. Right, my phone ran out of battery so I'm actually hoping that I might be able to splice this video on top of the other one. Um, well, right after it, but if it doesn't work then consider this part four. Um, right, so I've screwed the motherboard in is all secured nice and tightly with all seven screw points for this motherboard. Um, again, something to note about this is you can see how much of a tight fit it is. So again, I will stress, go careful, take your time, and just be patient. You're in no rush. Right. Now, for now, I'm going to show you how to do the graphics card. Now, again, depending on if you're doing a new build or not. If you're using ancient stuff, then the graphics port will look different. But this is what's called a PCI Express port. Um, just as a reference, it's actually version two of PCI Express. Now, one thing you want to also make sure is that if you remember the expansion bays I showed you earlier, if you try and move the camera down this side quickly. It won't reach. Down, down, there you go. On these bits here, you may notice that I've actually removed those that's where the graphics card outputs are going to be appearing. So the um, DVI outputs, HDMI output, and the other port that I can never remember the name of, and no, it's not VGA, it's the newest one. But it's irrelevant anyway. Right, another thing to note with the motherboards, sometimes they have slightly different connections. For this one, once the graphics card is in, you just push that down and that locks it into place. Other ones, you have a system where you basically pull something out away from the port and that locks it in. Um, and they're, they're the only two I've come across before. There may be more, but they're, re they're, they're all basically straight boards. The idea is this clip here. As you push the other clip in, that locks it in place and it keeps it steady and makes sure it doesn't move and fall out of the port. So to fit it in, you again, very carefully, Slot it in, make sure, it, make sure all the ports, which I think I have to remove these first, they've got protective bits on there. You should make sure the ports go out of the expansion slots at the back, like so. So they're all, sorry, I dropped the phone a bit. So you can see they're all out there. And then you just need to make sure it's lined up with the port on the motherboard. Once it's definitely there, again, Carefully slot it in. Say carefully, there we go. And make sure. Ah, that's why I didn't want to go. <laughs> right. And then make sure that it's definitely in properly. And then lock it in place. So there, that makes the graphics card nice and secure. You'll notice it's still wobbling though, and there's a very good reason for that. There are Two other things you need to do. Well, one other thing, really. Now, again, if I just take the camera out of my friend's hand, you'll notice that the case, you can't really see it in this, um, but you'll notice that the case, the actual graphics card has, in this case, two slots for screws. If you have, obviously, a smaller graphics card that only takes up a single bay, then you'll obviously only have one screw to account for. Um, so, simply, screw it in. Um, again, you can actually get tallest design for that as well, which actually does make it quite useful. Um, again, on my case, on my personal um, computer build, that actually has the tallest design as well on for the, for the expansion ports. So you don't have to faff around with the screws. You just 
pull the support down, clip it in place, and you're done. And it obviously holds all the graphics cards in place as a well, graphics card, sound card, whatever, as opposed to just a select few things. And it's not wanting to line up. This is obviously always something you expect to happen whenever you're trying to screw anything in. And that was me saying earlier that I should need no instructions on screwing. For now, I'm going to pause the video just while I struggle with this screw. Right. So anyway. Right, there was a slight alignment issue, like most things you screw in from multiple points. Put the screws in, don't completely tighten them, and then once they're both in, tighten them to make sure it's obviously all aligned. Now again, you notice, still a little bit flimsy, but that's safe. That's not going to move, that's going to be perfectly fine in your case. Um, now, in this case, there's a few things to do. I've already showed you where the processor power and the motherboard power goes. Um, in this case, I actually have a modular design for the power supply, so I only have to put the cables in that are going to be used. So for this instance, this is the power cable for the graphics card, which will slot in there. Um, I then also have, in fact, just for a reference, that's what the 6-pin looks like for the graphics card. This is what's called a Molex connector, which is often used for fans um, and older hard drives and disk drives. Sorry, I've got some gas at the moment. And that is then this, what the SATA power looks like. Um, so again, it's all modular for me, so I only have to plug in what I need. Um, other power supplies obviously don't offer that feature. And I will say as well that these aren't as efficient as the ones that are just all hardwired in. But of course, you get better airflow because there's less cables. Um, as another thing to note, when you put Especially with the front of the case on, you're probably wondering what all of these bloody wires are for. And I can understand that. In this case, they're always labelled. Um, so, I mean, this cable is for the, the front audio on the case. So, on this one, again, you won't be able to read it, but it's got HD audio written on there, which is self expansion, what that is, and AC97. Basically what that means is, double check your motherboard supports it. If it supports the HD out on, on the front, plug the HD one. Obviously it sounds better. The AC97 is an older standard and just not as clear. It's just an older standard, so preferably use the HD one. Um, the other ones you've got here is your USB connections. Oh, Christ. Then you've got your USB connections, which again, consult your motherboard instruction manual to where to plug these in. Um, but again, you'll normally have, if you've got two USB ports on the front, you'll have one connector. If you also have four in this case, you've got two connectors. So one, <coughs> pardon you. So for, so f you basically have one connector for two USB ports. Um, and again, consult your motherboard manual to see where they are. Now the more tricky ones, and you may actually find yourself needing to use needle nose pliers for this because it can be a bit awkward, is all of these little connectors, which is the LED light for the hard drive, which is one that flashes when you're using it, reset switch, power switch, power LED, and then you also have a system speaker, which is normally connected to the motherboard, but in this case, it's a separate thing that just hangs down, and that's what it looks like. That's the speaker. You know when you turn your computer on? When you end up with the um, with the computer on, when you hear the little beep as you start it up, that's what's making that noise. Just that tiny little pointless speaker. Um, I'm not actually going to put everything in right now, because it is actually a very time-consuming process to put on video. So the other thing I would also mention, I just need to grab my SATA data cables. Right, now, these are the SATA cables. Now, again, that's what the socket looks like for the data. Now again, you just plug these into the drives and then into the SATA ports 
on the motherboard. Which of these ones? In this case, they're grey. Again, if you can't find them, they're on the motherboard um, instruction manual, but they're usually somewhere um, closest to the front and the bottom of the case. That's normally where they're located. Now, something else you'll notice as well is normally the SAT cables come with the actual motherboard. Now, something you might notice is this one actually has a bit of an L shape going on with it. That is actually designed for the disk drive. So as it's all normally at the top of the case, if the camera just follows quickly, essentially, goes in like that, if I can get it in, and like that. So again, it's more for cable optimization, airflow, and again, obviously you plug that end into the motherboard. Preferably, you want your hard drive plugged into SATA, let's see what's got on here, SATA 3, SATA 1, SATA 0, SATA 1, whichever one has the lowest number is where you want to connect it. Normally, SATA 0 is the lowest. Um, the disk drive, again, any one, preferably the higher numbers. Um, in normal circumstances, it doesn't actually matter which one you plug in. But for the most part, just for simplistic reasons, hard drives, lowest number, disk drives, highest number. And you can't really go wrong there. Um, and I think that basically about covers everything. Um, one thing I will point out is that in this case, you have what's called a CMOS reset. Now, you won't be able to see it in this. Again, consult your motherboard instruction manual for it. It's basically, the, there's three pins here with a little um, jumper connector. That is, if you try overclocking or changing BIOS settings that don't allow you to actually turn the computer on anymore because they failed for some reason, then you basically, in this case, the three pins, only two are connected. You take the jumper out and move it to connect to the other pin, the, the unconnected pin to the middle one and then that will reset the BIOS settings, called the CMOS, to default settings and then you put it back and then the computer will start up all with default settings on on the hardware um, and that should be pretty much everything again take your time fitting everything um, any cable ties that come with cables keep on hand so that again you can just tidy the cables up, keep them out of the way um, and just generally try and keep the case so it's got as good airflow as you can get. Um, when it comes to, in this case, putting the front of the case back on, obviously make sure you trail the cables through carefully. Again, these were already connected when I got them, so try and leave that on if possible, because again, it just improves the airflow that little bit more. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure that is now everything that really needs to be said about building the computer. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave some comments um, on either three, either of the videos. Um, if I can, I will try and give some advice on any questions asked. Um, failing which, I'm sure there's loads of other YouTubers out there that know um, and would also be able to give you advice if I'm not available. Um, otherwise, generally, the internet is often a good source. Um, so I hope this has helped and hopefully makes you feel a bit more confident if you if you just want that little push of help to build your first computer um thanks for watching as i said i hope it helped and goodbye